Welcome to the demonstration movie for Feral Reality. My name is Dean Pearson. Today we're going to show you how to handle bullet trajectories in a point cloud environment. First thing I'll do is I'll bring in our mock crime scene. Just happens to be a 73 million point point cloud shot, of course, with a Feral scanner. Uh, this is our office in Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada. Shouldn't take too long to load. And it is complete. As soon as it appears in view, I'm going to go to my details and use vertical cutoff. I'm going to take the ceiling line down to about seven feet so we can see right inside of our scene. And every time we bring in a point cloud, uh, it's brought in, as you can see uh, over here in draft mode. I'll now up the quality to high quality view. And this will allow us to see every point that was shot. And it's now complete. Now I'm going to lock my view update. Every time I move in the point cloud, the software wants to reprocess all the points. So in order to accelerate uh, my ability to move through the scene without the software continually reprocessing, I lock that view update. Then when I get to a point of interest, I can simply click Update View and it will again process all of the points that are in view in this particular perspective. Now since we're working with the bullet trajectory tool, I guess we'll need a couple of points to represent our bullet holes. Obviously with your ferro scanner you would see where the bullet holes were, but since we're in a, a mock situation here, I'm going to add a couple of manual uh, points to represent our scene or our, our strike marks and our bullet hole. I'll put one here against that wall to represent the bullet hole and another one over here to represent the strike mark. Okay, so now we'll go to a top-down 2D view and we'll add our coordinate log so that we can have a record of where these points are in 3D space. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off Snap to Point Cloud and I'm going to go to my Measurements tab and I'm going to grab the coordinate log and I'm going to place it right here in the corner of the room. I'll go to the Details, knock down the X baseline to 50 feet. Zoom out a bit. And grab the Rotate Grip and move it into my position for my baseline coordinate log. Now I'll go add those points to my log. First one's right over here. I will select it, right click, add to log, and I will call this bullet hole. Now I will select my second point right after I update my view. And I will call this one strike mark. First I'll add it to the log. Bullet strike. Let's take that point size down a little bit and let's make our points nice and visible so that we can see them. So again, here's our bullet hole, here's our bullet strike mark. Now we just simply need to apply the bullet trajectory tool. To do so, I go to my draw tab hit the pull down menu by my line tool and here's our bullet trajectory tool. Now obviously I want to snap to points so I will snap to the first point, snap to the second point and my trajectory is now constrained to my field measurement points right here. Let's change our caliber to, well, I don't know, 25 caliber. And I'll show you in the positional information here in the Properties tab, the horizontal and vertical angles. Keep an eye on that as I extend this rod into 3D space. Horizontal and vertical angles have not changed. This bullet trajectory tool is constrained to those field measurements so that I can now use it as a tool of analysis to determine where this shot may or may not have come from. So if our shot was to come from, I don't know, 
just inside the door here and we wanted to determine how high off the ground our shooter had to be or where the gun was that fired this projectile we could take a measurement I'll once again update my point cloud and this time I'll go get my measurement tool it's located right here under the draw tab measurement tool once again, I'll snap to point, and I'll snap to the end of this trajectory rod, and I'll bring it down here to the floor level. Now I'm going to need to make sure that I'm at a minus 90 degrees, so I'm straight up and down, and I want to make sure my end elevation is at zero, in other words, resting right on top of the point cloud. And you can see that in order for the shot to come from this location, the gun would have to be 5.35 feet off of the ground. Now, in the event that I wanted to turn this into 3D text, I can do that by checking this box here. I'll update my font size. And now, wherever I move in my point cloud, this 3D text will be visible from whatever angle I'm at. That includes a top-down 2D view, if, if I so chose. Now, let's have a look at the measurement report associated with this. To do so, I'll go to my measurement tab, select the name of the log, and over here is measurement report. And as you see, we've got a measurement log. Your police patch or company logo would appear on every report. And as you can see, here's the northing, easting, and Z elevation of both of those um, data points along with the associated name. And that's how you'd handle a bullet trajectory using Faro Reality and your Faro Point Cloud Scans. Thanks for watching.